Well, everybody, we had a good run, but unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And right now, we're on the precipice of Bitcoin having a down month for the first time in six months. I know this seems a little bit alarming to people, but uh, if you're new to the game of investing, just realize that this is a natural progression. Nothing can go up to the right forever. These pullbacks are a little bit healthy, but I think there's a little bit more pain on the horizon, especially for August and September. So we take a look that Bitcoin is headed for the first money loss in six months. Today is May 30th. And we can see this is from Coindesk. Prices were still down about 5% for the month. The first monthly decline of the year, assuming this loss is held through Wednesday's close. Now, today is Tuesday. We may have a rally and we could go up just a little bit. But in all honesty, things have been kind of flat and a little bit of a dec decretion uh, for a little bit of time. But it does stay it against Ether. Bitcoin looks set for a monthly decline of nearly 7%. And we can take a look and just take a look at May 1st to May 30th. We can see that, yes, this is the first time <laughs> in quite some time we had a little decline. But it's not so bad. I mean, look, if you've been here since 2021, remember those days when it was 67, 68, almost 68,000? Those are pretty good times. And then, of course, we went all the way down to around 15,700 in not too much time. So for a one-month pullback, not too bad. The thing that uh, I'm worried about, though, is there was a, not worried about, but there was a video that I did recently. It was called Sell Bitcoin in May and Go Away. And the conclusion was, was that we're going to have some rough months, but it wasn't time for me personally to sell everything and just sit it out until, say, October, November, somewhere around there. Although maybe that would have been an option for you. I can't tell you what to do. And I will just say that if we take a look at historically the Bitcoin monthly returns table, there are two really bad months statistically over time. And the worst month of all of them is September. You can see just going from 2022 all the way to 2010 that it averages out about a negative 7% or so, plus or minus 12. And the only times that it's been green is, well, the one, well, two times, 2012, which is a Bitcoin halving, and 2016, which is a Bitcoin halving. So maybe next year in 2024, after we have the Bitcoin halving around April or May, it'll be a green month. I don't see that to happen, but who knows? And there was one, of course, in 2015, a, a meager 2.59. The second worst month is August. Again, negative 0.6 plus or minus 24%. Ouchie. That is uh, something to be considered of. So even though we're going into June, June and July could be a toss-up. Who knows where it's going? But in all honesty, expect some negativity for August and September coming up. But it's not all bad. There are good news and good narratives on the horizon. One of those, I think this is very huge. I haven't heard too many people talk about this. But because of the debt ceiling, which we love to spend here in America, we love to turn that money printer on, and we love just to go in debt here in the good old US of A, well, there was a handshake deal brought about over the weekend, and it looks like we're going to be able to raise that ceiling debt. And one of the positives that has come out of this is, this is uh, Pierre Brockard, and he said, hey, I searched the, through the documentation as far as the, the deal for the debt ceiling. There's no mention of Bitcoin mining. Does this mean the administration, Joe Biden's administration? Excise tax proposal is gone. And this is from uh, Representative Warren Davis. And yes, one of the victories is blocking proposed taxes. And those proposed taxes was 30% tax on Bitcoin miners. That would have been, in my personal opinion, a little bit of disastrous. So that is one of those victories that we will take. So we've got some pretty good people to thank for that who said, you either leave that out or we will not go forward with this deal, Warren Davidson being one of them. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Again, there's a little bit of volatility coming up, but there are good things on the horizon. Also, when I first read this article, it kind of, it kind of hurt a little bit because I was thinking to myself, why doesn't Tether want to do Bitcoin mining here in Rockdale, Texas? That's a great place. Why do they want to go to Uruguay? Well, here's what's happening. Tether doubles down on Bitcoin mining operation in Uruguay in the works. And again, at first I was thinking, man, because when you first read these headlines, you think to yourself, oh, it's got to be because of the narrative and the regulatory uncertainty and the taxes that were going on. But we just slashed that tax out. 
So it's okay, you can come to America. But that's not, the, that's not the point. I think Tether did a really smart thing here. Here's what we got. USDT issuer told BlockWorks that the en Endeavor will be the company's first time mining Bitcoin. Also remember that it's putting 15% of its reserves into Bitcoin. It's actually looking to hire energy experts to help support the South American-based mining initiative. Some of the positions based in uh, Montevideo, Uruguay, that Tether listed include an IT tech, site manager, electrician, and mechanical tech. Tether has selected Uruguay for, as its de destination for a Bitcoin mining facility because the country's high percentage of renewable electricity generation, chiefly wind and hydro hydropower. And when I read this, I'm like, hey, we got that. We got that uh, here in Texas. Come on. However, Uruguay currently generates over 98% of all electricity from renewable sources. Let me say that again. 98% of all the electricity from renewable sources sources so the big narrative of esg which i think is just a bunch of nonsense but whatever uh they're going to play that card and you got uh, elizabeth warren senator warren who says you know you can't use that because bitcoin taking so much energy well if you just say tether comes out and says look we're going to place it's 98 percent renewable energy and uh we're doing that to stop the narrative so we can just move past it i think it's a great thing to do to go to a country, help out the ecosystem, and then of course, stick in their face and go, look, here's the renewable that you're talking about. We're ESG compliant. Stop complaining about this issue. And to finish up, the Tether Chief Tech Officer, Paolo Arduino, nailed it, pointed to Uruguay's renewable energy capabilities and said, Tether is committed to sustainability. Our unwavering commitment to renewable energy sources that every Bitcoin we mine leaves a minimal ecological footprint while upholding the security and integrity of the Bitcoin network. I got to tell you, that's a, it's a beautiful narrative and uh, let's hope it plays out for them. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then to shift gears a little bit, just from, from Bitcoin, talk a little bit of alts today. And there was a, a question. I was on a pretty good Twitter spaces with uh, Because Bitcoin yesterday. I'll leave the link in the description. And one of the questions that they had was, they said, Rob, what's the, uh, the AI narrative that you're interested in? And how are you playing that in the uh, crypto sector? And I was like, really? I mean, we talked about um, NVIDIA, but my big thing was, I don't know if these crypto projects are really in AI or are they just saying they are in AI to pump the price and then dump it on everybody? Because that's what businesses do. I mean, I unfortunately have to tell you that there's not 100% reliable actors out there in all crypto projects. So I said, that was my biggest concern. And then this came out, and I thought this was pretty interesting. Render. Blockchain-based Render Network's token tracks tech stocks as broader crypto market decouples. And I've heard a lot of chatter on Twitter about Render, and it's kind of, in it's pretty interesting, actually. Crypto Render rallied in sync with tech stocks this month. It gained 6.5%, da 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 And Render's been... Uh, a good high beta NASDAQ play in the recent weeks, portfolio manager Lewis Halen said in Friday's market update. Artificial intelligent narrative as a catalyst for gains in both stocks and render. And it goes over some other stuff. I'm not going to go over this. So really what it comes down to is this. Why is this such a big deal? So here's render. Here's the token itself. I think uh, you're looking at rank of number 51. It's pretty, pretty good. 24 hours, okay. Seven days, uh, not so great. 14 days, now we're talking. 30, okay, I can see that. 90, uh-huh, 180, okay, one year, what, look at that, 70, went from a low of 32 cents June 2022 to all the way up to 261, this is a uh, very well performer, and we take a look at Max, well, wah, wah, we can't do everything, this is back in the peak 2021, it was $7.83, just if it goes back to that, looking pretty good, the question then is, and this is something I have, is, is this just a narrative that they're putting forth? They're like, oh, we're going to be big in AI without doing anything with AI. I don't think that's the case. So render, what is it? To me, it kind of feels like, like kind of what Theta is doing. I'll explain in a second. Render Network is designed to connect users looking to perform rendered jobs with people who have idle GPUs to process the rendering. Owners would connect their GPUs to the Render Network in order to receive and complete rendering jobs using Octane Render. Look, I am not a developer. I'm not a 3D architect. All I know about as, as far as GPU rendering is if you wanna make some type of 
of a 3D scene in a game or some type of computer program, you need to render it. And apparently it takes a, an enormous amount of computational power to do those things. Also, it's very expensive, especially in all the different sectors that are out there, gaming being one of them. So the question that I have was, okay, if you're gonna allow them to do that, just like how Theta will use the unused portion of your computer, which you can then use that and you would be like a node operator and they can use that to store all the data and they can deal with uh, uh, video processing, not video processing, but uh, to put out videos just like how YouTube is doing it. But instead of a centralized area, they do it a decentralized way. Use your computer, the storage space to store that video's files or parts of those video files and they will pay you a little bit of theta. It's the same thing here with render. Like, look, if you want to render something, we're going to use your unused GPU power or processing power of your computer. We're going to allow people to do that, and we're going to pay you a little bit in render token. That's it pretty much in a nutshell. So the question I had was, well, how expensive is it to, to like, render these, these 3D scenes in movies? This is Unity. Here's the pricing. So plus pro and enterprise, 400 bucks a year, $1,800 a year, $4,000 a month for 20 seats. Okay, I don't know how much that's going to get you as far as to create a whole game or to create a whole scene or whatever else you need. So I reached out to somebody that actually does this for a living. Uh, this is Mike, and uh, he's one of the developers, or he's the developer, uh, the top guy over there at Ladies and These Nuts. I do love that project. And this was their trailer that they put out. It was two minutes long, and he said, look, this trailer right here, it took us all night to render that all night and it's only two minutes long. I was like, well, how much did it cost you? And he said, it was between 300 and $400. He goes, but time is money. And if I can pay for something to increase the speed of the rendering, then I will do that time and time again. Again, time is money. And this, which is, I gotta tell you, I do love this little video. Uh, very quick, very fast, but you know, you, if you're costing between 300 and $400 for just a couple of minutes, imagine the whole entire game, how much that's gonna cost and the time you're going to have to actually use for those types of things. So the AI narrative is this. Here's a game, and this is Matt Wolf. And if you wanna know anything about AI, I recommend you follow him on Twitter and also on YouTube, I'll link in the description. This was a presentation a couple days ago. This is from Jensen Wang of NVIDIA. He gave his first live keynote in four years. What he's gonna show you, what this is gonna show you is rendering a 3D scene. They're gonna use AI and however you talk to the game is this AI person will respond and it will be different for every single person because it's AI generated. Just watch this 30 seconds or so. Hey Jen, how are you? Unfortunately, not so good. How come? I'm worried about the crime around here. It's gotten bad lately. My ramen shop got caught in the crossfire. Can I help? If you want to do something about this, I have heard rumors that the powerful crime lord Kuman Aoki is causing all sorts of chaos in the city. He may be the root of this violence. I'll talk to him. Where can I find him? I have heard he hangs out in the underground fight clubs on the city's east side. We gave this Jin AI character a backstory his story about his ramen shop and the story of this game. All you have to do is go up and talk to this character. And because this character has been infused with artificial intelligence and large language models, it can interact with you, understand your meaning in a really reasonable way. All of the facial animation completely done by the AI. We have made it possible for all kinds of characters to be generated. They have their own domain knowledge. You can customize it so everybody's game's different. Look how wonderfully beautiful they are and natural they are. This is the future of video games. Not only will AI contribute to the rendering and the synthesis of the environment. AI will also animate the characters. AI will be a very big part of the future of video games. Yeah, so how cool is that? So if you don't think that rendering could be potentially big or AI is not going to be a narrative and just everything, I think you might have another thing coming. Anyhow, I think that's going to be huge. And then just to finish up real quick, meme coins. <laughs> meme coins are taking over in different sectors. And I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but I will just say this that there's a couple of meme coins on Cardano. Uh, one was called Snack or Snake, I always say it wrong, Sneak, and then Bank meme coins. And their volume surged over a million dollars at the start of May to 18 million on Tuesday. And most of it's being done apparently on MinSwap. And I gotta tell you, if you're gonna do like, like, like meme coin trading, uh, we talked about Flip It yesterday or a couple of days ago, and good luck 
trading all those things and, and moving things around with the Ethereum fees. I mean, if you're going to make a, 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 a massive amount, sure. But I got to tell you, for trading, uh, say on like Cardano, a lot cheaper than that. So on MinSwap, you're, just, you're paying a, a two ADA fee. And right now, one ADA is worth around 37 cents. So you're looking at a little bit like 76 cents, somewhere around there per transaction. That's a heck of a lot better than what Ethereum's got going right now, which at one point was like 12 bucks. Uh, over the weekend and uh, for Memorial Day. So I just thought it was interesting that uh, <laughs> meme coins, which I got to tell you as a reminder, are uh, just gambling. And uh, if you don't think people are going to dump on you, uh, that is you are sorely mistaken. And it is all gambling, but that is just an interesting little piece. If you're going to gamble, at least make sure that your transactions are cheap. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Look, I don't care who you subscribe to, just make sure that you like the person, you trust them, and you can get some information. This is not a, a set it and forget it type of industry. I think in the next uh, year, year and a half or so, things are gonna accelerate so fast, you need to stay up to date. So that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.